I don't need to explain what Minecraft is. The fact that it's the best-selling video game of all time probably means that you've played it before too, or at least have heard of it. And chances are, your first experience with Minecraft was on the legacy editions of the game. The legacy editions being the several console ports of Minecraft. And with every major update for these versions, the team behind porting Minecraft to these consoles, 4J Studios, created worlds that taught you the basics of the game. As time went on, these small tutorial worlds became much more more advanced and intricate, enough to the point where you could spend hours of your time in them just exploring the vast landscape. So in this video, we are going to look through the history of the Minecraft tutorial worlds, and how they have changed and updated over time. The first tutorial world 4J made was her title update 3 of Minecraft. Most early players of Legacy probably remember this one. This is the bare minimum of what the tutorial world started to become as time went on. Believe it or not, but this is actually a newer version of the original one. There is an earlier version of this tutorial world before the redstone update, but I can't find it. As you can see over here though, there is some redstone stuff demonstrating how pistons work. And through the tunnel, you got a small town area that you can explore, and of course, you also got the giant Minecraft logo sitting in the sky, which houses a nether portal inside. The buildings inside of this village are relatively empty but give you an idea of how you could build houses and stuff like that. But the focal point of this world is of course the castle over here. The redstone no longer works anymore because this is a much newer version, so we're just gonna fly over. The castle itself is relatively empty, there's a tower, a little living area, and that's really it. Further back from spawn, you can see a lighthouse of some kind in another village, this one featuring a barn. Back when Minecraft was still new, these worlds weren't really meant for exploring, but rather just to teach you how the game works. So that's really it for this world. A nice, modest way to teach you the basics of the game. So now, we will move on to the next. The next world is her title update 5, and believe it or not, this one's actually smaller than the first one. The spawning area is the exact same, but something I should mention is that this dilapidated house thing is going to be a mainstay for all the worlds moving forward. Outside, we got this short minecart ride that takes you to a small town with mostly empty buildings. I feel originally, there wasn't a plan to have these worlds be anything other than a small area to teach you the basics of the game. I think this is also the update to add NPC villages, so this little town area is also connected to a naturally spawning village. The older, more dated design, of course. Also, just a few blocks away from that one, you can see yet another village. This one with a little custom flag on it. If we go back to spawn, behind it there's this big temple. If you go far enough, you can see that it houses a nether portal. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is that these worlds don't have a custom nether, sadly. But on the other side of the temple is an area you can live in. On the top floor is a double bed with full iron and a music disc, and on the bottom floor is a small library. This is before enchanting, so it was just for looks. Although this world is relatively empty, it still fulfilled the need to give new players an idea of how the game worked. So now, we will move on to title update 11. Now we have moved on to title update 11, and I'd say that this version houses the most iconic tutorial world out of all of them. If you didn't have Xbox Live by the time this tutorial world came out, you would be stuck in this version of Minecraft, which is where this tutorial world resides, obviously. This one brought in a lot of new features, but returning for the third time now, the spawn is the exact same, so we'll move on to the other stuff. But before we get to the castle in front of us, there is a small tower behind us that doesn't house that much. For a while, it seemed like this started to become a tradition with these worlds. At the top of the tower, there is an iron pickaxe and a music disc. Now, let's get back to spawn and head to the center point of this world, the castle. Inside the castle, there are many unique rooms. In the entrance, there is a small library area, which teaches you how to use a new enchanting feature. Across from it, we got a room that teaches you how to use potions. Downstairs, there is a mode of lava that you can cross by pulling up a bridge. Across from it is a chest that has nothing in it for me, but probably had something in it at some point. 
The top floor of the castle has a bedroom area, as well as guest beds. That's what I assume these are, at least. Also, a room that houses another portal. On the outside of the castle is a little farm that teaches you how to grow crops and breed animals. On the other side of the castle is also a small sand temple that predated the naturally spawning ones. At the bottom of this structure, there is a dispenser that dispenses paper? Yeah, originally I think this was supposed to dispense an enchanted sword in here, but while converting these worlds to Java, the entities could have been corrupted. Also in this chest is a music disc. Although this world is small, this is one of my favorite worlds 4J has made so far. I could just be nostalgia blind, but regardless, I feel this world encapsulates the essence of Minecraft like the other ones didn't. But now we are going to see how they up themselves in the next one. Right after title update 11, we got the title update 12 world, and this one actually has a different spawn. It's emptier than the old one, but it's a lot more open, still featuring the dilapidated wooden house of course. This is also the only tutorial world not to feature the iconic tunnel, instead opting for this staircase. There's the usual, tower in the back that features redstone lamps this time, the areas that teach you how to use enchanting tables, potions, farming, minecarts, and now new to this update, anvils and iron and snow golems. Up even more stairs is this small town area. It's pretty empty and I usually prefer the castles. I personally think this is one of the weaker tutorial worlds, but it still gets the job done. I know there's also a pirate ship with a creeper flag in this world, but I searched up and down the terrain generation for this map and I could not find it for the life of me. I know there wasn't much to see on this map, but that's really gonna change in the next one. The next one up is the TU-19 world, and boy, this is the one where you knew things were changing. This is the point where the tutorial world started to become places to explore, rather than just small areas to get the hang of the game. The spawn is about what we are used to at this point, so we'll just go to the rest of the map. And oh boy, there's a good amount to cover. You got the usual stuff that's been in every tutorial world so far. But new to this update are horses and beacons, also a redstone area that has some new blocks. But I know what you are all here to see, which is the castle. The castle is huge, and it's one of the most detailed structures 4J has made so far. This place has so many rooms I wouldn't be able to cover all of them, so I'll just play some footage of me running throughout the castle. Past this village over here is also another castle. This one isn't as detailed, but it is still a nice build. Just nearby, there is this small quartz house that has what I assume to be a chair inside. I don't really know what's going on with that. And I'd be dismissed not to mention the thing most people probably remember about this world, which is the recreation of Stampy's house on this little island over here. This shocked so many people when they first saw it, and I still remember it clearly and freaked out when I did. It's a one-to-one -one recreation of the entire thing, even the pirate ship over here. This was a turning point for the Minecraft tutorial worlds. No longer were they just something to get the hang of how the game worked. Now, they are turning into something much more, and we're only going to get better from here. Now, we are getting to the point where I won't be able to cover everything, as this is the point where the worlds start to get really huge. So if I miss anything, I apologize. Now, let us move to my personal favorite out of all of them. The Title Update 31 World. Man, where do I even begin on this one? Remember when I said 4J were gonna keep upping themselves? Well, in my opinion this is where the tutorial worlds peaked. You got this hub which teaches you everything we have talked about up to this point. 
so I won't bother covering it again. These new structures for everything though look really nice. Now, let us move on to my absolute favorite part of this entire world. The town. This town is amazing. I remember running around this town in particular for hours. It has so much to explore. Inside the town is a beacon, as well as a building that teaches you how to use the new redstone blocks. Also areas that teach you both how to use and craft fireworks and potions. Outside of this amazing town, we got a gigantic cathedral. This building is massive. To give you a comparison, there are probably more player-made blocks in this one structure alone than in the entirety of TU-11's world. West of the cathedral, you got what seems to be a golf course. A very interesting inclusion, but I don't mind it. Further back from the town, we got this nice-looking water mill, as well as this neat-looking mesa structure. Behind it, there's this little lighthouse, which is also a pretty nice build. And further back is this strange-looking arch, which I still have no idea what the purpose of is to this day. Behind the cathedral, there is an entire recreation of TU-12's world. This is a really cool feature, especially since you can't play on these worlds outside of the current update, unless you have them saved somewhere. Behind it, there's another lighthouse. Doesn't make much sense now that the new chunks have loaded in though. Behind spawn, we got a massive dilapidated structure, which I can only assume is another cathedral. This structure, like the last one, is massive, and if rebuilt, it would probably be bigger than the one on the other side of the map. Next to it is this strange looking drain thing. I don't know what it's really supposed to be, but it's cool I guess. In front of that is another town area, and if the one at spawn is supposed to be like an early America town, this one is similar to a city somewhere in like Italy or France. Going back to spawn and to the left, there is a taiga biome that has a parkour course and a minecart ride. And finally, in all the way back of the world is a manor, with hedge maze and all. This is a really nice house, and it fits with the theme of the world nicely. But with that, we have finally wrapped up TU31's world. This is still by far my favorite world 4J has made to date, but I'd be lying if I said they didn't up themselves yet again in the next one, so let us move on to it. The world for title update 41 is ridiculous. This world has so much in it, if I were to cover all of it, it would probably make up more than the rest of this entire video's runtime. So I'll try to summarize it as best as I can without it being too long. Inside spawn, you got these two creeper statues, and that's gonna be a big theme of this world. Out of spawn, you can see an elytra statue, which is how they want you to navigate the map. You also still got your hub area, and if I were to give this world its biggest criticism, it's that it's too disorganized. Navigating it can be tough sometimes, and you'll definitely get lost more than once. But the hub area features everything we have grown to know at this point, so I won't bother covering it again. Like I said, this world's theme is the Elytra, so 4J really wanted you to utilize it. And trust me, if you don't and you were just walking around here, you probably wouldn't have the greatest of times. Next to the Elytra, there are these two massive towers. Get accustomed with them because you're going to be seeing them a lot. Further away from spawn, you got these two nice shulker statues, one opened and one closed. And to the left of it, we got this ice colony, as well as this polar bear statue. By the polar bear, we got another tower, and next to it a zombie statue. Over this jungle here, we got a wither statue too, and you guessed it, another tower. I won't cover all of these, because this exact same tower shows up at least 10 times in this world. So to save time, I'll be putting more utilization on the other stuff in here. Over in this taiga biome, we got the nether portal, with the nether creeping into the overworld, which is always really cool and I'm astonished it took them this long to attempt this. But right now, Next to that is an ocean monument, and they improved on it a lot. The monument itself is the exact same, but the area around it looks really nice. It's this one big tube-like structure that circles around the entire ocean monument. It's even livable inside. But back on the surface we got this neat guardian statue. And if you think that's cool, just a few blocks over is an Elder Guardian statue twice the size of the regular one. This is my favorite statue out of the many on this world. It's definitely the largest out of them, and I really pity the Savannah Village right here. 
but also in this savanna biome we got a little cow statue and if we go further back we could see a desert biome with a really cool custom desert village as well as an upgraded desert temple this thing is really cool especially since it's one of the rare instances where 4j decides to upgrade an already existing structure behind the desert we got a jungle biome with a really nice looking jungle tree colony as well as a gas statue to the left of it behind the jungle we also got a skeleton and an enderman statue and behind the enderman we got a mountain colony as well as a mushroom village with giant mushrooms made into houses as well as a whole bunch of slime blocks that you could jump off of in here and finally if we head back to spawn you can see a pig and a chicken statue but finally that's title update 41's world summarized as best as i can do although this world without a doubt is one of the most impressive I can't help but feel that it's a bit unorganized and kinda hard to navigate at some points. So, let's see how they improve on the final one. Welp. Here we are. We're at the last one. This is the title update 70 world, and it was for update aquatic. So it has a very big emphasis on water this time around. And can we just take time to appreciate how big the spawn has gotten? And even with new update after new update, the dilapidated wooden structure still stands. But now, coming out of spawn, you can see that the Minecraft logo finally has something supporting it, instead of it just ominously levitating like every other one. And they finally did clean up the hub a lot more. It features things that weren't in any other hub areas, such as teaching you how to trade with villagers. Further down, you can see areas that teach you how to use elytras and tridents. In front of those are statues of both Steve and Alex respectively. Down this extremely long moat, you are free to explore everything. Behind us though are two creeper statues made out of prismarine. A lot of this world is just copy and pasted structures from TU41, so I won't be covering everything. To the right of it is a pig and horse statue. And if you go further back, you can also see two llama statues. And next to them is an ice biome with something poking out of the water. I wonder what that could be. On the other side is this paired statue, as well as this little overlook thing. I don't really know what that is. Behind there is this really cool looking blaze statue. And heading behind it, we could find this turtle statue, as well as these two dolphin statues rising out of the water. Besides it is an ocean monument with the Elder Guardian statue back again. And remember that thing in the ice I was teasing? Well, if you look under it, you can find the spawn for TU-41, now completely submerged in water. This is super impressive and honestly kind of depressing to look at. It just serves to you as a reminder of how far these worlds have come, and how even though they have now been long since discontinued, they will always be remembered in some capacity. So now, I will do the last thing I can really do in this world, and take the minecart ride showcasing this place in its entirety. Enjoy. Welp, that's it. After Minecraft switched to Bedrock, the legacy editions of the game have been discontinued ever since the Village and Pillage update. Although the inclusion of Bedrock makes sense, 
The impact the Legacy Editions left on the game will forever be remembered, and I hope this video re-encapsulated some memories you might have had. All the downloads to these worlds have been linked in the description of the video for you all to enjoy. Also, one thing that I forgot to mention is that the Discord server is now up and running and has been for a few weeks now. I kinda just left the link to Rot in my community tab, so I wanted to address it up right here. But other than that, I don't have anything else to mention. I hope you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you want to see my next upload. Goodbye everyone.